my good friend Vladi as he shares his story. Come on, baby. Thank you, church. Thank you. Uh, this is awesome. This is good stuff. Uh, so uh, I want to thank you, Brendan, uh, for allowing me to share my story, my testimony, our family's testimony. Uh, Thirty years ago, my family stepped off the uh, plane coming from Russia as refugees with $100 per person and two suitcases. Basically, my family left everything. Same thing for my wife's family. Uh, 30 years ago, in August, it will be 30 years for us. We landed in Atlanta. So uh, while I'm sharing my testimony, I want to make sure I come across uh, properly that uh, I'm not boasting of what happened to us and how it happened, but I'm telling you, this is a good country to be in. <laughs> and it's, it's very appropriate for 4th of July to say that this is the greatest country. It's still the greatest so for those of you who complain, stop complaining. <laughs> Just go and visit other country and see how good it is here, okay? So anyways, um, we know our humble beginnings. My wife grew up in the village where she had to go to the restroom outside. They didn't have the restroom and the running water in their house. So this is very humbling to be here and speak to you guys and share with you what God did in our life. So I want to share a couple of... Uh, moments in our life, and I would call them the hardest moments, the toughest moments, and uh, while I'm sharing that, there's two, two guys that got highlighted in my, in, my, in my mind from the Bible, Judah and Peter. They both committed the same sin. They both did what? They denied Jesus, Okay. What happened to the one and what happened to the other? So God, as a good father, will allow us as his children to go through the valley, to go through the valley of Baca. And he's so faithful to give us sweet waters in that valley. He will allow and he's, he will actually orchestrate the famine in our life so we can train the muscle. Pastor Brandon is going to share with you a good, good story about the famine. I mean... Famines are always constant in the Bible, and they have not finished today. We will see the famine. What we do before the famine and in the famine is determining who we really are. And a very good asset test for us Christians is living in faith, no fear. What I want to share today is about the seed and the bread. I've been doing financial planning for the last 17 years, and I've seen Christians, God's children, eating bread like crazy, stuffing themselves up, living in debt, eating everything, no seed. The hardest people for me to deal with in my office is the people, Christian people. Who, when I start talking about tithing, they're the ones who are against it. I'm being honest here, guys. They're the ones knowing the Bible, quoting the Bible at me, saying, well, that's an Old Testament. So anyways, when I was 18, God, I got saved. <laughs> and God opened my eyes that I need to be faithful in tithing. And I have been faithful in tithing for, the rest, for, for most of my Christian life. And then 2008 comes. We're in a prosperous, very good position. My, I, I was a youth pastor in the church. We had over 300 kids. That, I mean, the, the church is took off from 70 members to like a 1,000 members. Uh, my wife Mila was a worship pastor in the church. Life is good. Uh, we are investing in properties. Everything is beautiful. We're, we're doing great. And 2008 comes. You know the rest. <laughs> Famine started. We lost everything. So 2008, 2009, 2010 was the toughest years of our lives. We're going through bankruptcy, ch file chapter 7. We walked away from the community that we were in. Um, we were pretty much on our own. One Sunday night, we woke up, and we're like, do we go to Lake Tahoe, or do we go to church? <laughs> well, the church won. And we ended up here, actually. First Sunday, 
And the guy who was holding the microphone was talking about his book, Church Wounds. And I tell you, that service was for us. We bought the book, read the book. Uh, Father's Day came. Uh, there was a lot of signs from God that he's like, Vlad, this is your spot. This is, your, this, this is where you need to be right now because I want to heal you. Pastor Bob came around, a bunch of men who some of you are in this house, and it just started. It was hell. It was tough. But we were at the right place. Fast forward in a little bit. Uh, God started doing something. I realized that if I solve small problems, I'm going to get paid little. If I solve big problems, I'm going to get paid a lot. So I just, you know, rolled my sleeves and I started helping people. Getting rid of debt, getting rid of credit cards, helping them doing mortgage uh, modifications, all that stuff. And the income started coming in. And we're like, whoa, this is good. And I'm like, I, you, I don't know, Bob, if you remember that, I'm like, is this temporary? Is, this is good. I like it. Is, is this temporary? And it just kept doubling. I mean, it's still going. And I'm like, this is interesting. But the main thing God started teaching me is, is about stewardship. I'm like, God, what's the lesson you want to teach me in 2010? I mean, I remember the time where we had a women's group in our home, and the, the, the men came in and shut off our electricity because I couldn't pay the bill. And I remember my daughter came from school. <laughs> she got her piggy bank, and she's like, Dad, can, can, can you pay the bill? Are we, how are we going to wash our hands? I mean, I mean how are we going to do all of this stuff? That was tough. And I'm like, God, what, what is the lesson you're trying to teach me here? I don't want to go through this anymore. I want to learn. And he started talking to me about stewardship. He's like, are you going to eat through all the seeds and, and move them into bread? Are you really going to eat that? So I'm like, I need to save, and I need to pay my tithe, and I need to live too, right? Guys, I'm telling you, the acid test comes in every time you get a paycheck. You're going to look at that paycheck, whatever it is. I don't care. It's 100%. Are you going to eat through it? Or are you going to save a little? Are you going to tithe? That asset can take. And I've learned that the more faithful I am, the more God can give us. If I cannot be faithful with $5,000 a month, I don't care how much faith you have. You will never get $10,000 a month. So I came to a realization, the reason why there's not many wealthy Christian people, because our Father is so good. He will not allow anything and anyone to destroy your life. That's why we're broke many times. He will provide. No, no, yeah, you're laughing, but it's true. We're broke because, because we eat through everything. The biggest test, Proverbs says that, this is not Vlad's words. The biggest test for a man is his success. Success can destroy us easily. I ask, I ask this question all the time in my office. If God would give you a million bucks, what would you do with it? And pastor, very rarely I hear 10%. But I'm waiting for that. Are they going to say 10%? If they say no 10% given to God, I'm like, you, you're, you're in for a ride. It's going to take a while. Before you see that, well, anyways, let me come back to my testimony. I wrote a lot, okay? <laughs> and I got to run. <laughs> so, 2010, that's what God was teaching us. Are we faithful with little? Are we going to give? Are we going to save? Then another test comes. Um, 2016, July, actually, three years ago. We're in the mountains with boys. I love riding mountain bike, and I fall. And I break my hip. I'm like, man. And I'm in business. I mean, I don't get paid if I don't show up, right? Uh, so then my dad calls me and says, come over. We got to do my will because I don't feel good. And uh, they found cancer. So I'm on crutches. I'm, I'm, I'm in pain. And my dad is dying. I can't help him. 
So I'm in, in my truck uh, driving home, and I know he's going. I mean, that cancer ate him up really, really fast. Like in three months, and he was pretty much gone. We started begging God to take him. I'm like, God, either heal him or take him. I mean, he, again, don't feel sorry for him or me. He was 90, okay? So he had a good, good life, okay? So I'm like, and it hit me. I'm driving back home in the car. It hit me. I'm going to be an orphan. And I had that little pity party in my truck. I'm like, God, I'm going to be an orphan. My mom is gone. My dad is dying. And I tell you guys, it just came me. It just came. He's like, Vlad, I have fathered you. You're not an orphan. I'm like, so I'm not adopted? <laughs> so, I mean, guys, if you know me and, and my life, I got saved when I was 18. I did a lot of bad, bad stuff before I got 18. I, I couldn't even receive the gift of the Holy Spirit because I thought God will never forgive me. I thought I'm the worst. I, I thought I'm the, I'm, I'm like, Am I even, so anyways, and he's telling me in my truck, I fathered you. I'm like, oh, this is good stuff. I can do anything I want. I am fathered. I, I'm not just chosen or, or I am fathered by God for a purpose. I'm like, oh, this is good. So that the tough year went by. I'm good. I'm everything. And then I'm here somewhere third row right here. This is actually the most anointed place right here. <laughs> so I'm just saying. After worship, Fred is here, so he knows the story. Fred comes in after worship and says, Vlad, uh, God laid on my heart that uh, he sees you as a kite. And uh, the storm is coming. I'm like, Fred, you're missing the point, man. <laughs> okay, continue. And the God says, the string is secured. I'm like, this is interesting. Okay, fine. I'm like, Fred, but 2016 is gone. I'm still carrying the weight of my leg, being shorter, about nine, nine, nine millimeters from the fall. My father is that, what bad can happen to me? I'm okay. And then 2017, I'm making a decision to walk away from uh, $10,000 of residual income. I worked for a captive company. Whatever I made in my 15 years of work, they like, we'll take it from you. It's ours. We'll take your clients. We'll take everything. But I feel like God is telling me, Vlad, you need to step out in faith and do it. I'm like, really? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We created new partnerships, started on our own. And I tell you, God is so, so faithful. And uh, we haven't seen a down year yet. I know it's probably coming, and I don't really care. <laughs> if it comes... He's preparing me for something bigger. I feel like God is training us, you know, to develop those muscles of faith, muscles of trust in him. You know, what we are doing in the valley of Baca, what we are doing in those times of famine, really determine, determines who we are. And I know that biggest thirsts are coming. I mean, uh, the, the, the more God gives us, the more weight I feel. Uh, I'm like, I want to be, I want to be good steward. Uh, I want to be faithful, you know? It's like, God, did you, like, do sh are you sure, are you, you, you're talking to the right person? I know where I came from, in Ukraine. My dad had to take us out from school to go help out during the harvest season to prepare for the winter. I mean, I know what I've done in my life. I'm like, God, are you really picking the right man for the job? So right now what God is working on me is really be faithful in what he gives me. And he gives us a lot. I don't want to say how much. It doesn't really matter. My 100%, your 100%. He's looking for faithful servants. Not just servants, slaves' minds. He's looking for stewards. There's a lot of young people in this room. Guys, if he's giving you a thousand bucks a month, that's a lot. He wants to see what are you doing with that 1000 Are you eating through it and getting into debt, getting into, into credit card debt? Money. I mean, it was the biggest battle for me. Do I still be a pastor or do I go and deal with money? A lot of churches think money is dirty. No, money is a good asset test who you are. It brings out who the person is really is. I mean, 
think of it. Just, just start thinking about that million dollars. If we don't know what to do with a million dollars, God will never give us that million dollars. That's a good acid test right there. So I want to finish off on uh, this Romans chapter 8. I love Romans chapter 8. Read that chapter in, in, in Message Bible. Paul goes saying about this, 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 and then he says, with us, Romans chapter 8, with us, verse 30, if you're going to look it up, but read the whole chapter, please. Romans chapter 8, 30, he says, with God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God fathered me, how can I lose? I don't care what, what kind of famine comes. Most God's people prosper during the famine. We're out of this world. We're not, we, are, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. We should be prospering during the times of famine. But God wants to see how are we preparing for that. Are we going to keep whining? Are we going to lick our wounds and have our pity parties? Or are we going to rise up and say, Father, I know who you are. I love that story about, I'm preaching right now, am I? I'm done, okay. <laughs> Altar call time. Let's stand up. I want Vlad to pray for us. And Mila, Mila, can you come as well? Where's Mila at? Stay standing, stay standing. Come on, come on down front. Uh, you know, again, and I'll say it a few more times in the message. This is not one of those tithing trick testimonies. I hate it. I hate it when you're at a church and like, oh, this is one of them tithing ploys. No, this is not a 10% issue. This is a 100% issue, as Vladi said. All of it's the Lord's, and he's watching all of it. He's looking, and again, as I've seen a life, and Bob can attest to this, they've been through ups and downs and struggles, and just seeing faithfulness and resiliency, and you know, what I love about Vlad is I said, hey, can you come and teach financial stewardship to some 18-year-olds? Now, with who Vlad he meets with, that would seem like a step down for a lot of people, and he's like, I, no, has absolutely. So he spent a year with a bunch of discipleship students that I was with, and trained them in finances, they had more in their savings account than all their parents. And I had one, I had one kid come to me, he's like, yeah, can you, um, I'm, I'm not allowed to tell my parents how much money I have in the bank anymore. Because it makes them feel guilty. See, there, there is a way to look at what God gives us, and, and I love my friend and, and what he's done and his faithfulness and, and how kingdom-minded he is. So again, let, let that be the deposit this morning. So just let's close our, close our eyes this morning. You've been in that place of need. Uh, and now we're just talking about just need provision, but you see, you know what? I feel like this stewardship subject has been something God's been speaking to you. Just lift your hand up right now, Father. We just pray for grace to respond with stewardship. I'm going to have Vladi and Mila pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for who you are, that you're such a good father who loves his children so much. Father, we, we just want to be good stewards. We just want to be faithful. Lord, I pray for those who are in their hard times, famine. I pray that you would help them to make the right choices and right decisions in the valley of Baca so they can find that sweet water, that they can dig up those wells and put their roots deep in you, knowing who you are and who they are in you. Lord, I pray for those who are being tested by success right now during this good economy. Help us to be faithful, Lord, during the good times so we don't turn the whole income into, into bread and not eat, it, eat through it, but that we would prepare for the good times of famine to be wealthy like Jacob, like your, your people, the ones that you were with, in covenant were with. I pray that we would pass our tests good. With every paycheck we get, Lord, help us to be faithful. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.